This weathered building in Bogor city near Jakarta once used to be a place of worship for the Yasmin Church under the GKI denomination. It is built on private land, but the local government sealed it off four years ago after Islamist extremists objected to its presence. The Supreme Court eventually directed the city's mayor to allow the church to resume worship, but the official refused to obey the order. Under pressure from extremists, the then Indonesian president, SPY or Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, chose not to take any action against the mayor. Now, with a new president in office, there is room for optimism. But the Yasmin Church's struggle carries on and is being seen as a test case for the future of religious minorities in Indonesia. Uh, with this uh, new government, new president and new ministers, we, we hope that we can uh, use the place uh, to, to celebrate our Christmas this year. Supreme Court already uh, give us the letter to establish the church. For 10 years, uh, SBY was in his position as the president and for more than, uh, for about five years, uh, Yasmin, the GKI Yasmin, had been suffering uh, because of the, the attacks by, by, by intolerant groups, uh, which made many people afraid that uh, there would be an escalated conflict between Christians and Muslims. I don't, I never believed it because I have a lot of Muslim friends who are not happy with these extremist groups. They said that they didn't represent Islam. They didn't represent how Muslims should live together with people of other faiths. Indonesia is an archipelago of thousands of islands in Southeast Asia and home to the world's largest Muslim population. The roughly 210 million Muslims here are mostly Sunni. The country has witnessed numerous religious conflicts since the Indonesian War of Independence in the 1940s. Attacks on minorities increased during the 10-year rule of President SPY. In some of these years, the number of acts of intolerance and violence were more than the number of days in a year according to Jakarta-based Sitara Institute for Democracy and Peace. The new president, Joko Widodo, who is affectionately known as Joko V, assumed office two months ago after marginally defeating former general Prabowo Subianto in the third presidential election. The country's roughly 24 million Christians and others are now hopeful that extremist groups would no longer be allowed to attack or oppress minorities. No, I think that the, the expectations and the hopes are well grounded. You know, the constitution guarantees freedom of religion, and it is the duty of the president to protect religious minorities or all religions from you know being prevented uh, through violence uh, to to perform uh, the rituals to to you know to practice their faith. Uh, in fact, this hope started even before Jokowi took office. Uh, President Yudhoyono actually appointed a new Minister of Religious Affairs who is very progressive. He changed everything. He actually uh, approached the Shia community. Uh, uh, this community, political community, was uh, uh, displaced you know, uh, from their homes because they were attacked. And uh, one of the first things that he did was actually approach them and say, look, we have to resolve this in an, an amicable way, in a way that respects their, their, you know, their rights and uh, the freedom of religions. He also recognized the presence of the Baha'i community. It's a very small community in Indonesia, but he says they have the right to be, you know, to, be, to, to exist and to, to practice their faith. People uh, close to him have already said one main point of our program is to make 
every Indonesian feel safe, uh, free from fear of persecution. Thus, uh, he personally is a very open-minded man. And I think uh, the expectation in the Indonesian society is in a positive way that he will end these kind of small conflicts and intolerant behaviors which have been uh, not been acted upon by the former government. I believe that Jokowi is a man of action, while SBY is a man of words and promises. But every words, every promise that he gave was empty. So I just couldn't believe him. From the beginning, I already was suspicious that he would do nothing about Yasmin. But Jokowi, he has done a lot of things, even in his very short period of being a governor of Jakarta. He showed himself as someone who is able to transform the society. And I believe that Jokowi will transform Indonesia. It's still very early days. He's only newly a president. Uh, the new cabinet has only been uh, announced. But most of the initial signs are good. Uh, he, he's kept over, there's only one cabinet minister kept over from the previous uh, regime, and that's the Minister of Religious First, who was a new appointment then. And he's made some very good statements. He said that the Baha'is should be recognized as a religion. Uh, he, he broke the Ramadan fans together with Shiites and Ahmadiyya, who have been persecuted in the country. So in symbolical moves, ones which count, because he did a lot of criticism of her, he's done good things. And he's announced a new, there will be a new religion law, and we need to see what's in it. Uh, but that looks good. I was able to meet uh, this week with the, the new Minister of, of Law and Human Rights. And uh, know he's committed to defending the rule of law. One of the problems in Indonesia in, in the past has been that people would break the law on religious freedom. They'd attack a church or they would kill Ahmadiyya. Nothing happened. The law, the police don't protect you. You know, it's the society which may protect you. And I'm hoping that will change to simply enforce the law. And I know government officials have been talking about what to do about the Islamic Defenders Front, which is engaged in violent acts against religious minorities and nightclubs and places like that. Few doubt that President Jokowi sincerely wants the Indonesian society to be more progressive. But he faces a major political challenge. Jokowi's rival Prabowo Subianto, who had unsuccessfully challenged his election victory, has the majority in the parliament. The person Jokowi ran against in the presidential elections, Prabowo, you know, that was very hard fought and the election results were challenged. But Prabowo has accepted that. And he said um, that he thought the new cabinet was pretty good. So I think he's not, I mean, he will oppose what he wants to oppose, but I don't think he's dug in and say, you know, we're gonna make sure he can't do anything. Uh, well, when it comes to laws, I think that there's going to be a battle between uh, the president and the parliament, which is controlled by the opposition parties. Uh, not, but not necessarily on the question of religious minorities, because I understand that even the Prabowo camp is very much for, uh, you know, uh, guarantees of uh, freedom of the religion. Uh, are there going to be laws that uh, will be? Uh, implement or introduce or debate it in Parliament on the question of uh, freedom of religions. I'm sure that there are one or two issues that need to be resolved. Uh, but I think on, on the question of uh, freedom of religions, the majority uh, of the uh, political parties are for it. There are a number of factors in analyzing what Jokowi will do. The first one is personnel who he will pick up as his chief police, his attorney general, and of course nominated to be the Supreme Court justices, uh, Constitutional Court justices. 
uh, and also Minister of Law and Human Rights. Why? Because of course they are law enforcement official, and they're the one who who basically fail to to uphold the law to protect the minorities from being attacked, from being discriminated against. And the second factor is legislation. Uh, there are two types of laws that we can uh, take a look. One is the parliament parliamentarian law, and the other is executive order. So will they be strong enough? Will they be capable to revoke and to review discriminatory regulations that have been produced by the previous administration uh, for 10 years? The third one is we have to take a look at, especially on religious minorities, the four institutions which facilitate discrimination against minorities the Ministry of Religious Affairs, the Blasphemy Law Office under the Attorney General Office, and the Indonesian Ulama Council, which is a semi-official state institution. And last but not the least is the so-called Religious Harmony Forum, produced by the previous administration in 2006, which is problematic because Religious Harmony is obviously a concept used to repress minorities. President Jokowi may well be able to manage the opposition and implement his progressive agenda. But the GKI Yasmin Church too has a hurdle to cross. Some officials at the GKI Synod have urged the Yasmin congregation to accept the local government's offer to relocate their church as a gesture of goodwill. The Synod wants to build a monument of peace and harmony where the Seal Church building stands today. Church members do not agree. They point to another church known as HKBP Philadelphia Church in Bekasi City, which was also sealed off in 2011. That church agreed to the government's relocation plan, but continues to wait for the allocation of new land. Congregations of Yasmin and Philadelphia have been holding Sunday services in front of the Presidential Palace in Jakarta once in every two weeks to mark their protest. Yasmin members say it's not just about their church or the Christian minority, that bowing to demands of extremists would set a wrong example, and that it goes against the doctrine of Panchashila, or five principles on which the Indonesian constitution is based. The Panchashila includes social justice for all communities. The, the land offered by the local government, the previous local government, uh, is located uh, not near from the congregation's uh, live. Uh, so so uh, it's about more than five, uh, six kilometers from, from our uh, land now. We are, we are the church. If you are said that we do it, this one for our uh, struggle, yeah, we, we do it. I just disagreed with those people who believe that we had to just comply with the demand from those uh, uh, extremist groups. Even when the Senate said that Yasmin should relocate and then leave the land uh, and let's have uh, a monument of whatever, peace or tolerance or whatever, I said that's rubbish. That would only show that we are, we surrender to, to intolerance, which is not the, the, the spirit of Panchasila. The spirit of Panchasila is that we can live together in peace in spite of our differences, be, although we come from different uh, religious backgrounds, we will be able to live in peace together. The issue of Yasmin is not simply a GKI issue. That is the problem. The Synod, I think, fails to see this issue as a national issue. It is a national issue because Yasmin and Philadelphia is a test case for Indonesia, whether or not we can live as a pluralistic society. So if the Senate cannot see it 
as a test case for that uh, Pancasila ideology, we, we, we have failed to live up to our uh, belief that Indonesia is a pluralistic society. We have failed to live uh, in our national motto, Bineka Tunggal Ika, uh, even though we are many, we are still one and united. However, some Christians insist that the Yasmin Church should resolve the conflict by forsaking its demand to get the church building back. They say such a move would help minorities and the majority community to coexist peacefully. They cite examples of how Muslims in the past have acceded to demands made by minorities. In a way, it's probably even better in the sense that the Christians get their church building in, in a new place and then the Synod can have uh, actually proposed like a monument for the tolerance in another place. I mean, you get a church and a bonus, right? The dream of the Yasmin Church to celebrate Christmas 2014 in their own church building has not come true and its struggle continues. But Christians and others still look forward to better days under Jokowi's presidency. The the, the court already, the Supreme Court already decided in that in that this particular case. It's just a question of enforcing it, and uh, the president has the power to order the police uh, to enforce it which did not happen under President Yudhoyono. So this time around, I think, you know, it doesn't take <laughs> that, it shouldn't be that difficult for the President Jokowi to order the police enforce it. And, uh, you know, because the, the law is there, the, the court ruling is there, it's just a matter of enforcing it. And that's something that was lacking under Yudhoyono. Uh, but now I think under President Jokowi, uh, that, that the commitment is there, and I hope the police will also be more serious in enforcing the law, that, which means actually protecting the, the rights of all religious uh, communities, minorities or even majorities. Uh, so uh, I, I think we are looking at, uh, we should be looking at a significant improvement in the life of the religious communities, of all religions in Indonesia. Uber.